Hey everyone, Kaihatsu here, and have you noticed it too? Every one, every single one of these moons in the Mario series faces left. All of them. Okay, there's a very select few exceptions to this rule, but by and large they all face to the left. This of course is one of the many random things I've noticed and thought about. You know, at this point I should probably just subtitle my channel as Answering Gaming's Most Mundane Questions. Anyways, why is this? Even in places where the crescent moon was originally waning or right-facing have been reversed to be waxing. For example, Painted Swampland and Mario U, as well as later levels that use the same theme, are based on Van Gogh's Starry Night. The thing is, in the original painting, the moon in the top right is a waning crescent. Why did Nintendo change this? Van Gogh is dead, his works are in the public domain. What's the deal? Well, while there is no concrete answer from the company themselves, we can do a little sensible speculation and come up with some credible theories. There are two possible different reasons that all of these moons face one way in particular, historical and religious. Let's take a look at the historical angle first. So, like I mentioned in the previous video, the crescent moon has had a long history all over the world. However, within East Asia, the moon has enjoyed a long symbolic history through Chinese characters, known as Hanzi in China, Kanji in Japan, Hanja in Korea, and Hantu in Vietnam. These characters first popped up in around 1250 BC, but it is very possible that they existed in another form well, well before that date. The first recorded moon symbol as part of Chinese characters is part of the oracle bone script. The oracle bone symbol for moon is pretty simple. It's a crescent shape facing towards the left, a waxing crescent moon. Over the years, the moon symbol evolved, and while it changed quite a bit later on, it still bears some resemblance to the moon, in a pseudo-crescent shape, and in fact still faces to the left like its ancestor long ago. Hanzi, of course, as you probably know, spread to other countries including Japan. It's no surprise then that the moons in Mario face left. When you're learning an ideographic system from an early age, you're bound to associate objects with certain aspects of the writing, especially as many of the symbols are pictographs which resemble the object they depict. The symbol for moon is one of the most basic, and it's taught to children in the first grade of school, at a very early age, so people in East Asian countries like Japan, that use these characters, will of course have these lasting associations which may manifest itself in a number of ways, especially through creative fields. To them, having the moon face the left may be more natural when depicted in art and other media, and seeing as companies like Nintendo developed for Japan first, despite having a much larger international following, it wouldn't surprise me if they did it to make the playing experience better for their domestic audience. The fact that they changed the way the moon faced in Painted Swampland makes me think that there must be some sort of reason, because of how all of these moons follow the same pattern. So there, 2000 years of linguistic history is responsible for the moons in Mario facing left. Or is it? There's still one other way to look at this strange trend, through the looking glass of religion. Since the 1980s, Nintendo has had a pretty strict policy regarding overt religious symbolism in their games. From the crosses on graves being removed in Super Castlevania 4 to Ocarina of Time being re-released to fix music in the Fire Temple which was very offensive to Muslims, they've had their fair share of run-ins with religious issues. In fact, what happened with Ocarina of Time can serve as some context here. There were two issues with Ocarina of Time. The first one, which I already mentioned, was the larger part of the controversy. In the original release of Ocarina of Time, the Fire Temple music included various snippets of an Islamic call to prayer. This is a very big deal, because when the call to prayer sounds, one must turn off all music. Not doing so would be ignoring the call. Secondly, many more conservative groups of Islam believe that music is haram, so playing it over a call to prayer is very, very bad and very, very haram. The second issue that Muslims had with Ocarina of Time was the Mirror Shield. In the original release, the Mirror Shield had on it a star and crescent, which of course is a symbol of Islam, and the one in game bears a striking resemblance to the real Islamic symbol. Now, like I said in the last video, originally the star and crescent was not an Islamic symbol. It started out as a symbol of Constantinople, most likely the source of the Ottoman star and crescent, which was then adopted by the Ottoman Empire in the 18th century. The star and crescent was placed on top of Ottoman mosques, which is what led to its association with Islam in the West. The religion officially has no symbol, and to be honest, if you were looking for something more Islamic, then perhaps the Rub al-Hizb would be better, which is an actual original Islamic symbol. Originally, it was used in the Quran, which is divided into 60 Hizb, 60 groups of roughly equal length. The symbol determines every quarter of Hizb, while the Hizb is one half of a Juz. The main purpose of this dividing system is to facilitate the recitation of the Quran. Going back to the Star and Crescent, its use within national emblems and flags after the fall of the Ottoman Empire is what resulted in it being tied to Arab nationalism and the religion of Islam. So, in the present, it is an important symbol to those in the Middle East and North Africa, as well as Muslims. Because of this, its depiction in places where it maybe shouldn't be stirs up controversy and often anger within Muslim communities. Unlike the depiction of the Star and Crescent in Zelda, most versions of the symbol actually face to the right 
and after what happened with Ocarina of Time, it is possible that they didn't even want to come close to having any more religious controversies, and thus opted to stick with the moon facing left. Nowhere near a star. I mean, look at the space zone from Mario Land 2. Quite unfortunate. And Japan does not have the best record of being culturally aware of the outside world anyways, so it wouldn't surprise me if this was the case. So, out of the two different options, which do you think is more likely? 2,000 years of linguistic history or cultural ignorance? I think both have a good chance of contributing towards all of these moons strangely facing left, though my background of being in the Middle East may have made me favour the second part of this speculation piece a little more. Let me know what you think by liking the video and telling me your thoughts in the comments. Oh, and here are the results of last video's poll, where I asked whether or not Nintendo should change the design of the new sun and moon designs in Mario Maker. 8% of you voted to change just the sun design, 13% voted to change just the moon, and 45% want both to be changed, while 32% think that both designs should be kept. Anyways, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell for more culture bits. Thanks to my patrons for supporting the channel, and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.